Hi, in this video I want to look at the question of how many ways can we divide 12 students into three groups, each containing four students. Now before we do that, I actually want to look at an easier problem that's similar to this. So I want to look at the question, how many ways can we divide four students into groups of two? So let's first say that these students are called A, B, C, and D. Now first we know that there's four factorial different ways, which is 24 different ways, to permute these group of four students. So let's go ahead and write those down. So if we do that, we're gonna get this list which contains all 24 different permutations of these four different students. Now we're just gonna pair them off. So we're going to pair them off like this, where we have A with B and C with D. Then the next one, we would have A with B, D with C. And we can continue to break each of these up into pairs like this. Now that we have it written like this, we can see that every possible pairing of these four students is somewhere in this list. So this list includes all the pairings of four students in groups of two. But we're not done with the problem yet. So let's just take a look at this first pairing here where we have A with B and student C with D. Another way we might have written this problem is saying that the student B is with the student A and the student C is with the student D. But you can see that this pairing is exactly the same as this first one because we don't care which student is first or second, we just want them in pairs. We could also say the pairing with the students B and A and then D and C, this is another way we might have written it in this list, yet it's the same as this original pairing. And then we also could have had A with B and C or D with C. So for this one possible pairing, we've actually had it written four times in our list. So we need to account for that because we don't care about the ordering of this, so we actually need to take this out of this four factorial here. So you can see that each pair has two students, so there's two factorial ways that we can permute this first one, and then here there's two factorial ways we can permute this second pairing. So that tells us that we need to divide this by two factorial squared. So by doing that, we just took out this pairing this pairing, and this pairing, because we know that those are all the same as our original pairing. Okay, now next thing we need to notice is that the pair of C and D with the pair of A and B is also the same as this. So again, it didn't matter which one came first. It doesn't matter that C and D goes first or A and B goes first. We just need them in two different pairs. And since we only wanted two groups, there's two factorial ways to rearrange the group one and group two. So we need to take that out as well. So we need to divide this also by two factorial. Now our final solution should be four factorial divided by four times two. And I'll leave it unsimplified, but this is how our final solution should look. Okay, now that we've seen an easier example, let's try to go ahead and solve this one now. So now we have 12 students and we want them into three groups for each. Okay, so we're gonna say that our students are called A, B, C, D, all the way up to L. Now obviously I can't write 12 factorial different permutations of this, because that would take me forever, so I'm just gonna say that we know that there's 12 factorial different ways to permute this. And we also know we wanna divide it up into groups of four, so we want it to look something like this. Okay, so but what we notice is that this group, this group can be represented four factorial different ways, but it would still give us the same group. Same with this group, it can be represented four factorial different ways, and same here, four factorial different ways. So we need to divide this by four factorial to the third, because we don't care how we permute the elements in here. As long as they're all in the same group, it's the same thing to us. Okay, we also see that we have three groups, so we could call them group one, group two, and group three. But for us, this is the same thing as if we had group two first, and then group one, and then group three. So it doesn't matter which way the groups are ordered, it's exactly the same to us, so we need to take that into account as well. And there are three factorial different ways to permute these three different groups. So we need to take that into account and divide by that. So we need to divide by three factorial. And this will be our final solution. So you can kind of see a general formula here. So if you were asked the more general question of how many ways can we divide n students into k groups, each of h students. You would take n factorial, which is the number of students, all the permutations of the number of students, and then since each group contains h students, we have to divide that out by all the different permutations of h. And since we know we have k groups, this needs to be divided out k times, because remember, each group 
has H factorial different permutations. And then of course, since we have K groups, we need to make sure to divide out by K factorial because we don't care about the order in which the groups come. So this would be our general solution. That's all for this video. Thanks for watching.